Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and in my today's class, let us try understand the concept of gift under Transfer of Property Act 1882, which is from section 122 to 129. It is just about eight sections. Before getting into any sections, let us try understand the concept with some picture and explanation. This image helps us to understand the concept of gift. The one who is giving the gift is known as donor and the one who is receiving the gift is known as donee. Now, the donor can gift both movable or immovable property for which the examples like for movable property, you can keep the example of car, which is a movable property, whereas immovable property, a house, which is an example for immovable property. So a donor can gift both movable as well as immovable property. And there should not be any consideration from donee to donor in this particular transaction. And remember, love, affection, spiritual thoughts, all these are emotional things and they are not considered as consideration under TPA. So this is all about a brief introduction on gift. With that, let us try understand section 122, which throws a lot of light on what is gift and few essentials of gift. Section number 122 gives a lot of clarification on the concept of gift. It says gift is a transfer of certain existing movable and immovable property. First, it is a transfer. Second one, certain existing. You cannot gift something which is future property. You can transfer only the existing property. And thirdly, it can be a movable property or immovable property. Along with that, there are two important conditions. One, it should be a voluntary transaction. That means there should not be any influence, coercion or force, etc. For example, below I have given the case law of Fulchand versus Laku where gift was given under influence which is considered as void. Second one, there should not be any consideration to the person who is gifting or the person who is gifting is known as donor and the person who is receiving is known as donee and there should not be any consideration from donee to the donor. That is very important. Now, when should be gift accepted or acceptance when to be made? There are two important conditions you need to remember. One, the living status of both donor and donee. Second one, mental capability of both donor and donee. Now, first thing, the living status. Both donor and donee should be living while the uh, gift is given. Donor should be alive while the gift is given and donee should be alive while receiving the gift. And second aspect is capability of giving and capability of receiving. Yes, donor should have the capability of giving or he should have soundness of mind. Whereas there is no condition for donee to be having any capability of receiving. He can be even a mentally retarded person. That should not be a challenge to receive a gift. So this is all discussed under section number 122. Section number 123 discusses on how to transfer a gift. Now there are two types of gift, which is movable property and immovable property. If it is a immovable property, there should be a registered instrument which is signed by either donor or on behalf of donor, somebody should have signed along with attested by minimum two witnesses. In case of movable property, there is no much requirement. It can be a registered instrument or it can be just a delivery to the person who is receiving it. Donor has to deliver it to donee, just like the goods are delivered in the Sales of Goods Act. So that's very simple in the case of movable property and the case law you can refer for this particular section is Kalyana Sundaram versus Karupa Mupanar where it was decided that gift is valid the moment Dhoni has accepted it. With that, let's move on. Section 124 discusses about gift of existing property and future property. Now, if you have gifted something to someone which is an existing property with you, that is a valid gift. If you are gifting something which is not at available with you, which is considered as future property, is considered as void gift. And if a transaction is having both existing and future uh, properties, then the existing properties are considered as valid gift and whatever future is there is considered as void gift. That is section 124. Section 125 discusses about gift to be several persons. Now imagine you have gifted particular property to several persons and few have accepted it and few have not accepted it. For all those who have accepted it becomes a valid gift and for all those who have not yet accepted it, it becomes a void transaction. So that is section 125. Section 126 discusses about the revocation or suspension of a gift. 
Now, can we cancel a gift after making a gift? That is what it is discussing. There are two such opportunities. One, if there is an agreement between donor and donee that on happening specific event, a gift can be suspended or revoked and such is not dependent on the will of the donor. In that case, a gift can be suspended or revoked. For example, A is gifting a property to B and says that if B dies before A, such gift will be revoked or suspended and B dies before A, in that case, the gift whatever has made will come back to A. That is a valid revocation or suspension of a gift. Second reason for suspension or revocation is just like a contract. Like if a contract is made because of coercion, influence, fraud, mistake, misrepresentation, etc. Such contract will be considered as void and likewise in gift also if any gift is made because of coercion, influence, fraud, mistake, misrepresentation or any reason which makes a contract a uh, invalid or void contract the same shall be applicable for gift also. That is all about suspension or revocation and I have already discussed this case law of Wilchen versus Laku where a gift is made under influence as considered as a void gift. Section 127 is one of the important section because that can be an independent question on this particular section for a short note also which is known as onerous gifts or burden gifts. There are two types of transaction I am bringing in. First one gift in single transaction. Second one gifts in multiple transaction. First let us try understand gifts in single transaction. See there is a person for whom the another the donor is gifting lot of properties. Now among these properties few or one is burdened with an obligation and rest are free from obligation. Now the person who is receiving the donee he has two opportunities. One he has to take all the gifts or he has to decline all the gifts. For example A makes few gifts to B. What is the gifts? He is giving a house and a land. Now land is free of any obligation but there is a loan on house which is worth of 5 lakh rupees. It is a mortgage loan. Now B has to accept both house and land along with the obligation which has on house or he has to decline both. He cannot choose only land which is beneficial for him and decline the house. That is not possible which is known as Q sent it commandum sentar debates at owners which means he who receives advantage must bear the burden also. This is when gifts are given in single transaction. Let us try understand gifts given under multiple transactions. The concept continues in a similar line but there is one big change. In the previous example A has gifted to B both house and land at a time. But here the change is A is still making gift to B but he gives house in first transaction and land in second transaction. Now B can accept land which doesn't has any obligation and decline the house which has a mortgage on it. Because these are two different transactions he can accept only one transaction which is beneficial to him and refuse the one which is not beneficial to him which is the gifts in multiple transaction. So here there is an opportunity for the uh, receiver also donee also to accept whatever is best for him. There is one important aspect you need to remember owner is gift to the disqualified person. A donee not competent to contract and accepting property burdened by an obligation is not bound by his acceptance but if after becoming competent to contract and being aware of the obligation, if he retains the property given, he becomes bound to the obligations which are coming along with such property. That is all about section 127. Section 128 discusses about universal donee which means if particular person is transferring all his movable and immobile property to a single person in the form of gift. In that case, the person who is receiving the gift will become liable for all those debts and liabilities which are connected to that gift. For example, imagine A is having worth of 50 crores movable and immobile property and he transfers everything to B in the form of gift. By taking or accepting that as gift, B will also become liable for all the debts and liabilities which are connected to A for that particular properties. 
Now, there is one important exception. If the value of such debts and liabilities are more than the value of the gift, then the limitation of the burden will go to be only to the extent of the value of such gift. For example, if A has debts worth of 60 crore rupees, now B will be liable only to the extent of 50 crore rupees because the total value of gift that he has received is to the extent of 50 crores only. That is one important aspect you need to remember. The last section, section 129 reads, nothing in this chapter relates to gifts of movable property made in contemplation of death or shall be deemed to affect any rule of Mohammedan law. So anything related to deathbed gift, you need to refer section 191 of Indian Succession Act. So this is an exception for the Mohammedan law from section 122 to 129, whenever there is a gift of movable property made with the contemplation of death. With that, I'm concluding this session. Thank you so much for watching me. Please visit my channel for many more videos on other laws also. I have different playlists for each law. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing me. I get a lot of likes and comments from you guys. Thanks for that which keeps me motivated. All the very best for your exams and thank you so much for watching me.